In a magical land of the continent, Geralt is fighting against a monster called Kikimura. Geralt is a monster hunter known as a witcher, meaning he's a mutated human with special abilities. He manages to cut off one of the monster's legs, but the Kikimura disarms him and pushes him down into the water. After lots of struggle, he manages to retrieve his sword and cut another leg to then stab the Kikimura in the head, finally killing it. Afterward Geralt goes to the town of Blaviken and enters a tavern, but all the locals discriminate against him for being a witcher. Some men get ready to attack him, but Renfri makes them back away with just a word and even shares a drink with Geralt. Next a young girl takes Geralt to a tower, saying he can sell the Kikimura there. Geralt immediately notices the door is magical and just walks through it only to discover the sorcerer Stregaber has created an illusion that simulates a paradise filled with beautiful women. Stregaber wants Geralt to assassinate Renfri because she was born with the curse of the Black Sun. All the women who carry that curse were born mutated and are predicted to bring the extermination of the human race. To prevent this, sorcerers have been killing these women and Renfri is the only one left. Renfri's mutations make her immune to Stregaber's magic, which is why he wants to hire Geralt's service. However Geralt refuses, saying he only hunts monsters and is neutral to society's squabbles. Geralt leaves Blaviken and in the forest he's approached by Renfri, who wants to know where Stregaber is. She explains that the assassin he sent abused her and robbed her, which is why she killed him and now she wants revenge on Stregaber. Geralt stays neutral, but he bonds with Renfri over being discriminated mutants, and they end up doing the naughty. That night Renfri tells him not to run from the girl in the woods because she's his destiny. In the morning Geralt wakes up and sees Renfri's gone, so he rushes back to Blaviken, where he's surrounded by Renfri's gang. A guy shoots an arrow at him, but Geralt easily deflects it before meeting them in a fight. With incredible strength, fast and precise movements, and the use of magic signs, Geralt kills the gang members one by one, sometimes even using their own weapons. After decapitating the last guy, Geralt hears a girl asking for help and discovers Renfri is holding her hostage. Geralt tries to use a magic sign to make her obey him, but magic doesn't work on her. After pushing the girl away, Renfri attacks Geralt, who corners her against the wall because he doesn't want to hurt her. Renfri stabs him in the leg and forces him to fight, exchanging multiple hits of their swords but with only Renfri causing any damage. Eventually Geralt manages to corner her again, yet Renfri keeps on trying, so Geralt has no choice but to kill her. Then the locals and Stregaber show up. When Stregaber says he wants to do an autopsy on Renfri, Geralt threatens him with his sword, so Stregaber mentions he butchered a bunch of men to make people around them angry. Everyone starts calling Geralt butcher and throw stones at him, so Geralt has to leave town with his head down. Many years in the future in the kingdom of Sintra, Queen Kalanthi is holding a feast when a knight suddenly informs her that the empire of Nilfgaard is coming to invade. She immediately gets her army ready and rides with her husband Ice to the battlefield, where they meet the Nilfgaardian army and a vicious battle begins. Bodies start falling all over the place as soldiers kill each other with no mercy, and while at first the Sintrans put up a good fight, eventually Nilfgaard's numbers overpower them. Ice thinks they should retreat but Kalanthi refuses to surrender Sintra. Suddenly Ice takes an arrow through the eye and dies, causing Kalanthi to have a breakdown before trying to go after the archer. Later at the Sintran castle, advisor Mouse Sack and Princess Cirilla meet with a wounded Kalanthi, who has finally retreated and is dying. Outside the Nilfgaardians are invading the city, so Mouse Sack puts up a magical barrier around the castle to keep the soldiers at bay for now. The Nilfgaardians spend the whole day shooting flaming arrows at the barrier, tiring Mouse Sack until he can't hold his magic up any longer. The enemy breaches the gates and another furious battle begins while the Nilfgaardians kill soldiers and citizens alike with sadistic brutality. Kalanthi tells Cirilla to escape because Nilfgaard came for her and she screams in protest, which makes the entire room shake. Unmoved, Kalanthi tells Cirilla to find Geralt because he's her destiny. Meanwhile the royal knights give everyone a bottle of poison to drink so they can die honorably instead of being butchered by Nilfgaard. As people die in every room, Kalanthi goes to the window to end it all as well. In the castle's secret tunnels, Mouse Sack and a knight guide Cirilla out, only to see some Nilfgaardians coming. Mouse Sack tells Cirilla to take a horse and leave with the knight while he buys them time, but the duo barely gets to ride for a few minutes before they're chased by Care, the archer who killed Iced. He quickly kills the knight with an arrow and Cirilla falls off the horse, giving Care the chance to capture her. As they ride out of Sintra, Cirilla sees her kingdom burning down and gets so angry that she starts screaming. The horse gets scared and they both fall to the ground, so Cirilla keeps yelling to make Care's head hurt but also causing a huge monolith to collapse between them. This opens a huge rift in the ground that allows Cirilla to escape into the woods. Back to Geralt, many years after Blaviken he's taking a break at a small tavern while the bard Jaskier sings about monsters. When Geralt tries to leave, a farmer approaches him and pays him to kill the monster that has been stealing his grain. Jaskier starts following Geralt because he wants an adventure, and doesn't stop even when Geralt punches him to shut him up. When they make it to an open field, Geralt is suddenly hit by a little projectile from a creature hiding in among the plants. Then Jaskier is knocked down by another projectile before the creature comes out to hit Geralt with his horns. His name is Tork, and he's a sylvan who is tired of humans trying to poison him. 
Geralt attacks Tork and punches him, only to be ambushed from behind and be knocked out too. Later Jaskier and Geralt wake up tied up inside a cave. A sick elf has fun hitting them while the King of Elves Philavandral explains that Tork has been stealing food and medicine for his people. Jaskier is confused because elves live in golden palaces, so Philavandral has to tell him that's propaganda. The elves were kicked out of their lands by humans and now they live hiding. Geralt points out that by attacking humans the elves are only proving them right, so they should leave and rebuild instead of losing more elves in fights. Seeing Geralt as another victim of humans, Philavandral decides to let him and Jaskier go, and Geralt thanks him by giving him the farmer's bounty. Many years in the past in a small town, a hunchbacked girl called Yennefer is attacked by two teens for being ugly, which causes Yennefer to unconsciously teleport. She appears inside a strange place and meets sorcerer Istred, who calms her down and explains she's in Eritusa, the college to learn magic. Thinking he wants to attack her too, Yennefer slaps him, but Eistir just opens a portal for her so she can go home. Later at the farm, Yennefer is being abused by her stepfather when they're suddenly interrupted by Tisea, a teacher from Eritusa who offers to buy Yennefer for a few coins. Her mother protests, but her stepfather accepts the deal and Yennefer is taken against her will. In Eritusa, Yennefer is locked up in a room and has a breakdown during which she breaks a mirror. The shards give her an idea and she tries to self-delete. However Tisea saves Yennefer's life and as soon as she wakes up, she's sent to class. Tisea demonstrates the use of magic, explaining that it always has a price. Fringilla tries a spell to make a rock float and her hand starts mutating, so Tisea demonstrates how to pay the price by making a flower die to levitate the rock. Then all the students try it, but Yennefer is the only one who fails. Feeling down, Yennefer looks for Istred and befriends him. Days pass and Yennefer continues to fail at doing magic. In her free time she visits Istred, who comforts her and teaches her how to read his mind. One night, Tisea takes her students to a cave with an open ceiling. Their task is to bottle lightning, but the first two girls fail, and so does Yennefer. Only Sabrina pulls it off, and it makes Yennefer so angry that she shoots some lightning, which Tisea has to redirect. Sometime later, Istred feeds Yennefer a special flower that allows her to open a portal, causing her to reveal her real father was half-elf and Istred kisses her. Afterward it's revealed that he's working for Stregaber and tells him that Yennefer is a quarter-elf. Later Yennefer hears some noises and follows them to discover Tisea transforming three classmates into eels. Then Tisea asks Yennefer to push them into the water, which immediately lights the school up with magic. In the future, Cirilla hears a bunch of soldiers looking for her and hides just in time. Then she tries to grab some berries but suddenly she hears a noise and meets Dara, a boy who warns her those berries are poisonous. Dara hunts some rats and shares them with her, agreeing to stick together. Eventually they come across a Sintran refugee camp and Cirilla runs to it, but this time Dara doesn't follow. While trying to get some food, Cirilla meets a boy who has elf ears hanging on his neck because he killed a bunch of them. It turns out Sintra used to be the land of the elves and Kalanthi ordered her people to kill any elf who tried to take it back. The boy invites Cirilla to stay in his family's tent, where the mother notices Cirilla doesn't have shoes so she orders the dwarf servant to give her his. In the middle of the night, Nilfgaardians attack the camp. As the family grabs their stuff to escape, the mother slaps the dwarf for dropping her things and insults him, causing the dwarf to finally snap and stab her multiple times. Suddenly someone cuts the tent and Cirilla is pulled out, only to discover it's Dara. They run together through the massacre in the camp, where they see the other boy dead and care looking for her. The kids run into the forest, and when Dara takes off his hat, she discovers he's an elf. Sometime later, Cirilla wakes up when she hears weird voices whispering to her. She follows the voices into the Broccolon forest, ignoring Dara calling her name. When he tries to follow her, he's stopped by arrows coming from the trees, and a bunch of corpses in the area reveal the locals don't like visitors. Back in present time in Tamaria, a young dying boy is telling Witcher Remus about the monster that attacked him. The father pays him to kill the creature, so Remus follows a trail of blood and bodies into the butcher's shop. He carefully sneaks around with his sword out as he hears the monster run in the dark until the creature waits for him to turn and kills him from behind. Rumors of what happened soon reach Geralt's ears, who travels to Temeria to investigate. The local workers want a revolt against the king for doing nothing, so courtier Ostrit and the royal knights have to show up to stop them. Then Geralt tries to offer his services, but Ostrit makes his men kick Geralt out instead. On their way out, the guards suddenly fall asleep and fall off the horses. At that moment royal sorceress Triss reveals herself, saying she wants Geralt to save the creature. Later at the castle, she explains that the attacks have been coming from the crypt of Princess Ada, who rumors said was killed while pregnant. The monster may be Ada's cursed unborn child. She also allows Geralt to examine all the bodies of the creature's victims, including Remus. Geralt discovers the bodies are only missing the heart and liver, and the only monster who eats like that it's a Striga, a cursed female. This confirms the creature is the unborn princess. The next day, Triss introduces Geralt to King Foltest, and Geralt shares the truth about the monster. Annoyed, Foltest asks everyone to leave, but Geralt waits for the others to be out to suddenly lock the door and interrogate Foltest. 
he wonders why the king hasn't reacted to the news of his sister being murdered and asks who is the baby's father. Foltest refuses to answer and kicks Geralt out of his kingdom. Instead of leaving, Geralt sneaks into the crypt with Triss. After Geralt sniffs the bed, they find a bunch of letters inside a music box. The queen wrote to Ada asking her to stop getting naughty with Foltest, which confirms he's the baby's father. They take the letters to Ostrid and Geralt mentions he smelled Ostrid's scent on the prince's bed. Ostrid admits he used to be jealous of Ada because she chose her brother over him and he was the one that sent the curse. He had been trying to curse Foltest but it backfired, and Geralt punches him for it. In the evening, Geralt returns to the crypt and finds Foltest, who begs him to save his daughter. Inside, Geralt ties Ostrid to the bed and forces him to share what spell he used, making him realize he'll have to fight the Striga until dawn to break the curse. Geralt takes his special potions for a boost and then leaves the room, allowing the Striga to find Ostrid and kill him in seconds. Afterward the Striga searches for Geralt, who must fight her without killing her. He throws a chain to capture her, but the Striga easily breaks it and attacks him. Geralt fights her without using his sword, pushing her away with a magic sign instead. However the Striga easily knocks him down and starts throwing around. With another magic sign, Geralt destroys the floor, causing them to fall into an underground area. Then he places a magical barrier on the entrance before he's attacked by the Striga again. When he's down, the Striga tries to escape, but the barrier keeps her at bay. At that moment the sun starts to come out, so Geralt runs to push the Striga and prevent her from returning to her crypt. Instead he goes inside himself and locks it with a magic barrier, leaving the Striga screeching outside in frustration. In the morning, Geralt finally comes out and discovers the Striga has become a young girl, meaning the curse is gone. When he comes closer, the girl jumps on him and bites his neck because she doesn't know how to be human. Moments later, Geralt wakes up after being healed by Triss. She tells him that Foltis made up a story about how Ostrid died while killing the Striga and that locals consider him a hero. Geralt just takes his money and leaves. Back in the past, Yennefer and Istred are having their first time while Yennefer keeps up an illusion to practice her magic, which makes it look like they have an audience clapping for them. Afterward Yennefer meets with the Enchanter who will modify her body to be beautiful because all sorceresses must look good while working as royal advisors. Sometime later, Yennefer learns that instead of advising the king of her homeland as planned, she'll be sent to Nilfgaard. She angrily demands an explanation and Tissaia shares that Stregaber told the rest of the council that Yennefer is part elf. Sometime later Istred notices Yennefer has missed the initiation and goes looking for her, only for Yennefer to yell at him because she's realized he manipulated her. An argument ensues but Yennefer refuses to forgive him. While a ball is being thrown to introduce the new sorceresses to their kings, Yennefer goes to see the enchanter. Since there isn't much time left, he can't prepare the herbs to put her to sleep, so she'll have to go through it awake. Like all sorceresses, she must pay the price of the transformation with her fertility. As the enchanter removes her womb and begins working on fixing her body, Yennefer screams in pain but never gives up, letting every bone an inch of skin reform itself. Moments later, Yennefer shows up at the party and shocks everyone with her stunning beauty. She immediately dances with the king of her homeland and gets the position she wants, making everyone else seethe. In the present, Jaskier is in a tavern hearing the alderman describe how Geralt lost to a monster. Jaskier doesn't believe him, and soon Geralt enters the tavern covered in monster guts. Everyone considers Geralt a hero while Jaskier makes them sing his Witcher song, which has helped clean Geralt's reputation and made him famous. In return, Jaskier asks Geralt to be his bodyguard for an incoming royal party. When they arrive at the castle, Mouse Sack immediately recognizes Geralt and asks him to chat in private. He explains lots of people are gathered here to ask for the hand of Kalanthi's daughter Pavetta, although Iced is there because he's more interested in Kalanthi herself. When Kalanthi finally arrives, the party truly takes off. Two drunk lords begin arguing about manticores, so Geralt throws some sass at them to shut them up. Amused, Kalanthi invites Geralt to sit with her. While they dine, Kalanthi asks Geralt if he'll help her out if things get violent but Geralt refuses, reminding her that witchers are neutral. As the party progresses, they're suddenly interrupted by a man sneaking past the guards to ask for Pavetta's hand. Iced immediately takes his helmet off and everyone is shocked to see that this lord urchin looks like a humanoid hedgehog. Kalanthi orders Geralt to kill him but Geralt refuses, saying this isn't a monster but a cursed knight. Then Kalanthi orders the guards to get him, yet urchin beats them up in seconds before announcing that Pavetta belongs to him under the law of surprise. A whole army of guards tries attacking him again and while at first urchin can defend himself, more guards keep coming and he's overpowered. When he's about to get killed, Geralt cuts in to defend him, and the battle restarts with Urchin and Geralt fighting together. One by one the soldiers go down all over the dance area, and soon the other lords come forward to take over the attack. However Ice takes Urchin's side, saying the law of surprise must be respected. Total chaos ensues and eventually Kalanthi grabs a sword to save Ice before yelling for everyone to stop. Suddenly Pavetta runs to Urchin and hugs him, revealing they've been having a secret affair. Then Urchin explains he saved the king's life years ago and as a reward, he asked for the law of surprise, which gives you what a person has but doesn't know yet. 
Later that day the king discovered Kalanthi was pregnant with Pavetta. The king may be dead now but Kalanthi reveals she knew about this, that's why she tried to hire Geralt in advance. Urchin had never intended to claim Pavetta, but one day he bumped into her by accident and they fell in love. Pavetta says she wants to marry Urchin, and Iced, Mouse Sack, and Geralt tell Kalanthi that a promise must be honored. Cornered, Kalanthi approaches Urchin with fake acceptance and takes out a dagger to kill him. At that moment Pavetta starts screaming and a magical pulse blasts through the room, knocking everyone except Urchin away. The couple floats in the middle of a magical vortex of wind, which may destroy the building soon. Geralt tries to break the vortex with his signs, but he's only pushed back. Then he drinks a potion, and with the help of Mouse Sack's magic, he manages to break through the vortex and make Pavetta stop. After a few seconds of darkness, everyone confirms they're fine, and Kalanthi has no choice but to accept Urchin as Pavetta's husband. Iced also asks Kalanthi to marry her, so they have a double wedding. The couples have a lovely ceremony and when Urchin and Pavetta kiss, Urchin becomes human because true love breaks his curse. When Geralt tries to leave, Urchin insists on rewarding him, so Geralt asks for the law of surprise to brush him off. Suddenly Pavetta throws up, revealing that she's pregnant, which means Geralt has a claim on her child. However Geralt doesn't care and leaves, ignoring Mouse Sack's warnings against ignoring destiny. In the past, years after the initiation, Yennefer is escorting Queen Callus and her seventh daughter across the countryside. Suddenly their carriage stops and they hear screaming before several swords begin poking through the carriage. Yennefer looks out and sees all the guards being slaughtered by a mage assassin controlling a creepy monster. The creature comes after them, so Yennefer opens a portal so she can run with Callus and the last standing guard. The group appears in a desert and Yennefer realizes the mage was sent by the king to kill Callus because she was unable to have a male heir. The assassin appears behind them and the monster immediately kills the guard while Yennefer opens another portal for her and Callus to escape again. They appear in a town and Yennefer begins taking Callus' jewelry off because the king probably gave her something to be traced. The mage shows up again, so Yennefer uses her magic to freeze the monster in midair while opening a portal with her other hand. Once Callus runs through it, Yennefer follows her, only for the queen to call her useless. The mage appears again, and this time an angry Yennefer escapes alone. Callus is immediately killed by the mage and when the creature is about to kill the baby too, Yennefer shows up and decapitates it. Then she throws a magical attack at the assassin to distract him while she grabs the baby and runs through a portal, only for the mage to throw a knife at them. Seconds later, Yennefer lands on a beach and realizes the baby is dead, so she buries her in the sand. Afterward Yennefer begins living off the grid, traveling to random towns to make money with her powers. In the future, Cyrilla continues to follow the voices and finds a bright light before finding herself surrounded by dryads. They also have Dara, but they're just healing his arrow wound. In private, Dara asks some questions that make Cyrilla admit she's the princess of Sintra, which makes Dara angry because his family died during Kalanthi's elf slaughter. That night, Cyrilla has a nightmare about the Sintra massacre, people dying everywhere, and Care's crazy face trying to kill her. When she wakes up, a dryad takes her to see an ancient tree and makes her drink its sap. Cyrilla takes a sip and appears in a desert, where the tree asks her what she is. In Sintra, the Nilfgaardians continue to burn everything down, capture Mouse Sack, and find Kalanthi's body. A servant cuts a piece of her skin to eat it, and while he has a vision, Fringilla kills him. Then she reads his entrails and discovers Cyrilla is in Broccolon, so she sends Care after her. Sometime later, Care enters the room of a man who keeps people's body parts in jars. This guy is a Doppler, meaning he can take the form of any person, and Care hires his services. He takes him to see Mouse Sack, who tries to run only for the Doppler to jump on him and copy his appearance before killing him. In the present a few years after the Sintran feast, Jaskier finds Geralt fishing for a djinn so that he can wish for a cure for his insomnia. When he finally finds a bottle, Jaskier fights him for it, and the bottle accidentally breaks. Geralt wishes Jaskier would shut up and a cut appears on his arm as a strong wind begins blowing around them. Guessing it's the djinn, Jaskier makes two dumb wishes, only to suddenly be pushed by magic. Geralt uses his sign to send the djinn away and when he turns around, he finds Jaskier puking blood with a tumor on his throat. On his horse, Geralt takes Jaskier to the nearest camp and asks for a healer. The man inspects the tumor and gives Jaskier a potion that will buy him a few hours, but they'll need a powerful mage to take care of this. Apparently there's one in the mayor's house. Geralt rides to the mayor's house and knocks down the guard to get inside. The mayor appears before them naked only to fall asleep on a chair, so Geralt and Jaskier go deeper inside where they discover Yennefer is throwing a naughty party, meaning their timelines have finally collided. When she hears about the djinn, she immediately accepts to help. Jaskier is quickly healed, but he'll be unconscious for a few hours. When Geralt checks on him, he notices Yennefer is preparing a ritual to capture the djinn and tries to warn her against it. However Yennefer kisses him to take control of his mind. When Geralt wakes up, he's in a cell with the healer, who explains that Geralt went on a rampage through town under Yennefer's control. The healer tried to stop him from attacking the citizens, only to get arrested as well. Meanwhile Jaskier wakes up and panics when he sees Yennefer getting ready for a ritual. 
She corners him against the wall and threatens him until he makes a wish. At the same time, the mayor's guard appears at the cell to start beating up Geralt, who wishes this guy would burst. Suddenly the guard's head explodes and a second cut appears on Geralt's arm, revealing he's the real master of the wishes, not Jaskier. Geralt's wish makes the djinn appear in front of Yennefer, so Jaskier takes the chance to run away. He bumps into Geralt and tells him about the ritual, so Geralt rushes back inside. Yennefer is on her knees having trouble controlling the djinn's humongous power, yet she refuses Geralt's help. With no other option, Geralt makes his last wish, asking for his life and Yennefer's to be connected. Since the djinn can't hurt Yennefer without hurting his master too, it disappears in a big shockwave that brings down half the building. When Yennefer and Geralt wake up, they start arguing, only to suddenly get dirty together while Jaskier watches from the window. In the future, Cirilla is out of the tree's illusion and sees a dryad arrive with the heads of Nilfgaardian scouts. They get ready with their bows for an attack, but the one that shows up is the fake mouse sack asking for Cirilla. The girl is happy to see a familiar face and leaves with him and Dara. As the trio starts making his way back, Dara asks lots of questions, finding Mouse Sack suspicious. When Mouse Sack answers incorrectly, Cirilla finally sees through him. Furious, the Doppler tries to drag her by force, so Dara attacks him. Dara's silver knife hurts the Doppler, who quickly disarms him and tries to choke him. Cirilla picks up the knife and starts burning the Doppler again, causing him to show his real face. Then Dara takes his knife back and pushes the Doppler against a tree, asking questions instead of killing him. Cirilla grabs the knife to do it herself, giving the Doppler the chance to knock Dara down. Terrified, Cirilla runs away, only to be caught by the Doppler in the form of a Nilfgaardian soldier. Moments later, Cirilla finds herself tied up inside and in room where she meets with Care. However as soon as Care turns around, Cirilla changes forms to copy Care's because it's actually the Doppler, who is angry at Care for not telling him how dangerous Cirilla is. A fight ensues and Care has trouble fighting the Doppler because he's copying his skills. The men fight all over the room, using any object available as a weapon. Care cuts the Doppler's face with a broken bottle, forcing him to run away. When Care comes out too, he sees a bunch of locals and can't guess who the Doppler may be disguised as, so he gives up. Meanwhile Cirilla is tied to a tree in the forest and found by Dara, who quickly frees her. He scolds her for leaving the safety of Broccolon, saying she only brings terror and death just like Calanthe, then he abandons her. Cirilla travels alone and ends up in a small town, where she steals a horse to travel faster. That night, she's camping on an open field when she's suddenly approached by some guys. She realizes they're people she knew from Sintra, but they aren't here as friends, they want to capture her and bring her to Nilfgaard for the reward. Terrified, Cirilla falls to her knees and her powers take control of her. With a creepy voice, she shares a prophecy about the end of the world and screams. In the present, a few years after the Jin incident, Geralt and Jaskier meet with Bork and his two bodyguards. Over a drink, Bork explains a dragon has appeared in the kingdom, and the locals tried to attack it to get its gold. In revenge, the dragon has destroyed half of the countryside. The king has now put a price on the dragon's head, so lots of teams are getting ready to go after it. Bork wants Geralt in his team, but Geralt refuses, saying dragons are intelligent creatures and he doesn't kill them. However he immediately changes his mind when he discovers Yennefer is coming along with a knight. While all the teams are going up the mountain, Jaskier finds a monster among the bushes and panics. Geralt explains it's a peaceful monster that probably is just hungry. However the knight comes forward and viciously slays the poor creature, decapitating it before continuing to hit it with his sword. Later when the group stops to rest, the knight roasts the monster and eats it, which makes him feel sick and run to relieve himself in the woods. The next morning, the group discovers that the knight was murdered while pooping. Yennefer is furious because she lost her sponsor and Geralt asks her why she wants to kill the dragon. She explains that a dragon's heart can cure infertility, but Geralt just laughs at her, saying it's an urban myth. Then the dwarf team announces they don't trust the team of mercenaries, believing them to have killed the knight, so they'll take a shortcut. Geralt's team and Yennefer go with them discovering the shortcut is a very small path around the mountain made for dwarves. They still cross it very carefully, however their weight makes the wood break and Bork and his bodyguards fall, managing to hold onto the chain at the last second. Geralt holds onto the chain wanting to save them, but the wood is breaking under him too. Not wanting more deaths, Bork lets go and his bodyguards quickly follow him. Moments later, the group stops to make camp and Geralt visits Yennefer in her magical tent, where they end up getting naughty for the rest of the night. The next morning, Yennefer and Geralt discover the dwarves left without them, so they go after them. When she catches up to the dwarves, Yennefer uses magic to make them freeze. Then she enters the cave and discovers the dragon has already died protecting her egg. Yennefer tries to approach her only to find her path blocked by Bork's bodyguards, who are actually alive. The women are about to fight but Geralt interrupts them, soon followed by a second dragon. It turns down this is Bork's real body and he never hired Geralt to kill his wife, he wanted the Witcher to protect the egg from the other teams. At that moment the mercenaries arrive, so Yennefer and Geralt help the bodyguards protect the egg. 
a battle ensues during which Geralt and Yennefer kiss as they attack their enemies together. One by one all the mercenaries are defeated, but unfortunately more keep coming. Yennefer and Geralt fight the enemies outside while the bodyguards fight those who manage to enter the cave. A guy sneaks around and almost reaches the egg, so Bork breathes fire to kill him. Outside, a mercenary throws dirt into Geralt's eyes to distract him, but Geralt catches his weapon and allows Yennefer to kill him, ending the fight. Moments later, the dwarves finally snap out of Yennefer's spell. Back in his human form, Bork gives them a bunch of dragon teeth, which they can use to prove to the king that they killed the dragon. After the dwarves leave, Bork reveals to Yennefer what Geralt's wish was. Yennefer gets angry because now she doesn't know if what they have is real, and after an argument, she breaks up with him and leaves. Many years later, Geralt sees the Nilfgaardian army marching towards Sintra, meaning he's finally in Cirilla's time. He travels to Sintra as well because he's worried about his child of surprise, so Mouse Sack explains Cirilla is fine although her parents died years ago. Suddenly Geralt hears a noise and checks the tunnels to see two men, realizing Kalanthi sent assassins to kill him if he ever showed up in Sintra. Then Geralt takes Mouse Sack hostage to force all eight assassins to come out of hiding. Wanting to avoid a fight, Mouse Sack opens a portal to teleport himself and Geralt away. Afterward they go to see Kalanthi, and Geralt explains he's come to take Cirilla away to protect her from Nilfgaard, promising to bring her back when the battle is over. Kalanthi reluctantly agrees and introduces him to a fake princess, saying she'll be ready in a few hours. While waiting, Geralt sees a mysterious wind open a door and goes outside, where he sees the real Cirilla playing with some kids and being called your highness. Realizing he's being tricked, Geralt rushes to confront Kalanthi, who ignores his warnings and orders Ice to escort Geralt out of the kingdom. On their way out, Ice stops by an arch, where two gates suddenly fall to capture Geralt. Soon the Battle of Sintra happens and the city is already shown. When the guard runs by, Geralt knocks him out through the cell door and steals his keys to escape. Outside, Geralt starts fighting off Nilfgaardians, killing a few before hiding to watch the soldiers storm the castle and Kalanthi falling to her death. Geralt decides to sneak into the castle to find Cirilla, but after killing more soldiers, he discovers she's already gone. Meanwhile Yennefer is approached by sorcerer Vilgefortz, who convinces her to return to Eretuza. All the sorcerers are having an emergency meeting to discuss Nilfgaard's attack on Sintra. An argument ensues over whether they should help or not only to be interrupted by Frangilla, who is working for Nilfgaard and asks them to stay out of the way. Yennefer and Tisea want to help Sintra, but the group votes and it's decided not to intervene. In secret, Vilgefortz gathers those who voted yes to fight anyway. The sorcerers leave on a boat to reach a keep on Sodden Hill, the location that Nilfgaard will try to push through to continue further north. There are lots of refugees here, so the sorcerers must protect them as well. Both groups start working together to prepare a bunch of traps and weapons, like enchanted bottles. Yennefer magically multiplies the feathers so they can make more arrows. A few hours later, everyone is asleep but Yennefer wakes up just in time to see a fireball coming at them and deflects it with her power. While she alerts the other sorcerers, Frangilla orders another fireball to be thrown, and the mage dies in the process just like the first one because fire magic is forbidden. The fireball is deflected again, so Frangilla creates a box and gives it to another sorcerer. In the morning, the sorcerer walks through the forest while spreading a thick fog that the Nilfgaardian soldiers march through. While everyone gets ready in the keep, Triss goes outside and makes a bunch of mushrooms grow in the forest. When the soldiers step on them, a dangerous gas is released, killing them all. Another group of soldiers approaches from a different direction and a sorceress uses her magic to snap all their necks. A third group is coming, so Sabrina and her arches throw the enchanted bottles and hit them with arrows, causing a bunch of explosions to rain down on the Nilfgaardians. After the final group starts marching, Vilgefortz teleports to the Nilfgaardian camp and starts fighting the few soldiers left there, using his magic to control his sword. Kerr finds him and a duel starts during which Kerr keeps disarming Vilgefortz and he keeps calling his sword back with magic. Eventually he runs out of energy, allowing Kerr to kick him down a hill. Next Frangilla opens a portal that connects to the keep's entrance, and her archers shoot arrows through it to kill a bunch of people. The Nilfgaardian sorcerer uses the distraction to sneak inside and drop the box as he dies. To say it goes to confront Frangilla, who throws Dimeridium powder at her to block her powers. Then Frangilla activates the box, which releases a bunch of parasites. Soon the Nilfgaardians surround the keep and kill any sorcerer outside. Triss rushes to the entrance and creates a barrier out of vines that gets the enemy stuck. A soldier manages to reach through the vines and burns Triss' chest, burning the vines too. Meanwhile the worms take control of Sabrina and a few kids, who take some of the enchanted bottles. Sabrina surprises Yennefer and stabs her before the kids drop the bottles, causing a huge explosion that causes dozens of deaths. The tower also falls and Yennefer and Sabrina are thrown to the ground, where Sabrina passes out. Yennefer sees all the death and destruction that surrounds her and goes outside to start killing soldiers left and right. In the forest, Vilgefortz wakes up and finds a wounded mage from his side who killed a bunch of Nilfgaardians. The poor guy asks for help, but Vilgefortz kills him instead and ignores Yennefer when she tries to contact him telepathically. 
The Nilfgaardian soldiers keep coming, so Yennefer absorbs all the flames from the keep and releases them on the hill, setting the whole forest on fire but protecting Tesea. The huge flames kill all the Nilfgaardians, winning the battle. In the meantime, Geralt leaves Sintra and eventually finds the destroyed refugee camp, where a guy is trying to give the dead Sintrans a proper burial. Suddenly the man is attacked by necrophages, monsters that haunt places with lots of dead bodies. Geralt quickly saves him and tells him to run before more necrophages come out to attack him, starting a vicious fight. Their numbers allow them to overpower Geralt and they even bite his leg, but Geralt pushes through and kills them one by one until there are no monsters left. Then Geralt collapses and wakes up later to discover the man came back for him on his wagon. Because of his wound, Geralt keeps having hallucinations of his childhood and his mother, but also of Bork telling him it isn't real. Geralt drinks some of his potion and throws the rest on his wound, only to start hallucinating again. He remembers how his mother abandoned him in the middle of the road for the witchers to take. A few hours later, Geralt wakes up to a woman healing him. At first he hallucinates it's Renfri or Yennefer, only to then discover it's actually his mother. He calls her out for giving him to the witchers, who painfully experimented on him to give him his powers, but his mother tells him to move on. In the meantime, Cirilla wakes up and discovers her magic killed her horse and all the men. A woman finds her and takes her home, promising she only wants to help. That night Cirilla dreams of Geralt calling out for Yennefer, and remembering he's her destiny, she decides to leave to find him. Soon the wagon arrives because this is also the home of Geralt's savior. He hears the wife mentioning a girl in the woods, and remembering Renfri's words, Geralt jumps off the wagon and runs into the forest. There Cirilla and Geralt finally meet and they embrace as their destinies come together. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.